I'm a corporate speaker uh, from a company Mel named Bellsoft. Uh, well, most of us are actually uh, people with mathematical background. And uh, we mainly focused around Open JDK project, uh, but also uh, Graal VM project as a different virtual machine able to execute Java and other languages. And within Graal VM, there are two modes of execution. Uh, Graal VM uh, with JIT compiler and Graal VM with ahead of time compiler. And the special in, in JIT mode, uh, the runtime is a um, hotspot uh, virtual machine. And in AUT mode, it is a substrate virtual machine. The other nice properties of the runtimes um, are that uh, not just Java is supported, but also other languages and backends. So the code can be, uh, there may be an effective engine to execute uh, Python or Ruby and interoperate with Java code and even uh, manage Java inside itself. So this is an interesting kind of project and many things are possible there. Uh, but from a practical perspective, uh, we saw some areas that we can focus on for areas for improvement within the uh, existing implementation within uh, that virtual machine. Uh, yeah, one uh, very good op side of this project is that uh, Code itself is written in mostly in Java. So the vast majority of source code of this project is Java. So it's very easy and interesting to make changes, to implement things. And in the end, it turns to be a cross-platform cross implementation where uh, if we work uh, with some parts of the runtime and we don't do anything too specific, we get it on all supported platforms like x86, uh, r64, and in the future probably others. So runtime is a complex, uh, probably everyone here knows that. Um, in Java, uh, practical applications benefit very much from strong Java sites, such as multi-threading, uh, support in the language and the standard library, and garbage collection. That's there from the very, very beginning, from the start. Um, and of course, the specification, uh, one of the most popular languages is written very correctly and no specific algorithm uh, for garbage collection is defined there. So there are different implementations. And if we talk about native images and garbage collectors uh, that are in that native images, uh, well, mm, the default one uh, is serial garbage collector, which surprisingly uh, shows good results in different benchmarks, uh, or at least uh, in circumstances, then heap usage is not that high. Or we just don't allocate too much. Uh, so this particular uh, image presents uh, some microservice uh, with very small working set of data. And here, a native image variant of this service uh, shows better performance than a spot virtual machine. And this uh, native image uses a serial garbage collector. Uh, and in this case, that spot uh, uses a parallel garbage collector, one of advanced garbage collectors and there is some relationship between open jdk and graal vm it used to be uh, graal compiler used to be uh, integrated as part of open jdk for both JIT compilation and special mode of aot compilation which wasn't successful and it was deprecated by the interface uh, for embedding such a compiler is still in OpenJDK, and there's now a project uh, called Galahad that's devoted uh, to 
new to a new integration of uh, native image uh, benefits and OpenJDK. It's very, it is a very beginning of this project. So no work is yet done there. It's only, uh, it's just a new project in OpenJDK. So when we talk about serial GC in uh, Substrate VM, it's a stop the world generational GC. Uh, the survivor generation, so it's a copying collector. Uh, there are actually by default uh, 16 uh, uh, different survivor spaces. And uh, as I said, sometimes it shows very good results, but we know and we can see it also in some benchmarks uh, that this top the world garbage collector obviously uh, wastes. It wastes, uh, wastes CPU resource and your imposes if we have a lot of garbage and we have uh, enough CPU resource available for us. Sometimes native images are used in a way uh, we can intentionally limit their resources to one CPU or even a fraction of one CPU. But that's not always the case. So obvious improvement uh, here uh, is to have parallel execution in this phase. And this is a very well-known idea. So it, it, it exists, uh, different implementations exist uh, for ages. Uh, but what our team has done here is the actual implementation that uh, haven't exist haven't existed before for that. and um, this new uh, parallel implementation parallel gc implementation in substrate vm uh, it has to be enabled uh, with a special flag during uh, aot compilation itself and in runtime it can be tuned in a way like we can uh, regulate the amount of parallelism here this implementation that we have so far uh, does parallel execution only in, in, for a part of the work. Probably the most important part, uh, uh, gray object scanning, uh, but still some, some more work can be made parallel. Uh, the idea behind that was, uh, so, uh, Graal VM, it's a public variant, uh, so-called Graal VM Community Edition. Uh, actually, has uh, two garbage collectors. Uh, besides of serial, uh, the so-called Epsilon garbage collector, which is a knob garbage collector. Uh, and the idea was to bring the most simple implementation that doesn't introduce uh, heavy trade-offs and that brings actual benefits. So it is uh, considered to be a low hanging fruit. Uh, well, it looks like it is possible uh, for from the implementation perspective, uh, we've tried to reuse as many existing uh, things as possible. So garbage parallel garbage collector uh, is based on what serial garbage collector does. We use uh, many uh, pieces from serial garbage collector. And as I said, uh, it parallelizes uh, the phase of uh, gray object scanning, uh, but it actually took existing visitor logic and just adds parallel processing on top of it. Uh, as there is a parallel processing, there is a, a problem of synchronization between uh, GC threads. Uh, and not just synchronization, but also uh, the interesting question is how we would split the work. Because if we have two small chunks of work, imagine we process uh, a single object every time. Every thread tries to uh, reserve a single object for work. It would be uh, too much because the uh, trade-offs uh, will be enormously huge. From another perspective, 
do a large chunks of work, uh, lead to a unbalanced uh, processing where we just waste time waiting for work uh, for we do too much processing within single within a single thread. So a working technical solution for that uh, was to reuse uh, the existing um, chunks of work uh, and make them equal to uh, working chunks uh, that are being used for uh, allocation, for memory management. So that uh, one megabyte, it's, it's a tunable parameter, uh, one megabyte chunks. Uh, this is a working set for every garbage collector thread. So when um, such a thread uh, does scanning and the amount of memory is not sufficient, so this chunk is not sufficient, it uh, starts processing a new chunk and it can put it into a shared buffer, shared uh, stack where other workers, uh, they can pop such chunk and continue their own processing. So after some point, uh, all threads are out of work and uh, that's there the parallel processing ends. Uh, the other interesting part is uh, how we uh, actually perform promotions. So here it's a uh, uh, racy, race algorithm uh, uh, where different threads can compete uh, to promote uh, the same object. Uh, they just reallocate memory and this is a cheap operation because it happens in their uh, local buffers. It's just a pointer increment. And um, only then they all try to, uh, or some of them try to install forwarding pointer and this is an atomic operation. So because only one thread can succeed. So it succeeds and then does all the rest of the work uh, that is uh, actual bits uh, of the object and other threads just uh, abandon their uh, counters, roll back the allocations. And this, it works surprisingly well. Um, and as I said, all that uh, memory uh, management reuses over the existing mechanisms within substrate VM. Uh, of course, uh, we need to know about current garbage collector in certain places. Like here you see uh, there's a kind of a circle of dependency if you look at the perspective of classes, um, not so from a perspective of methods, but uh, it's not that scary. Uh, we just kind of set up environment for our allocation uh, and then uh, system, low level system methods related uh, to, to the heap management, they are reused. Uh, that we need memory in young generation or old generation. It's all being managed in the same way as for the part of GC. Um, substrate VM uh, source code uh, is again interested, uh, interesting not because uh, not only because it's written in Java, but also because uh, it is meta programming. Uh, so such things are declared with uh, some. Uh, magic uh, using annotations. Uh, we use few well-known uh, industrial benchmarks in Java world to look at pauses, uh, to look how we uh, improve uh, certain phases of garbage collection and uh, well, overall garbage collection picture. Obviously, uh, with enough CPU resources, uh, and here it's a multi-core machine, probably only four cores are available. Um, but definitely uh, we see the certain improvement uh, on all the pictures. So that was uh, so-called um, uh, big round test uh, benchmarks uh, that's, that simulates uh, some data structure being 
failed uh, and um, shrinked during the program lifetime. And another indust industrial benchmark is uh, Hyperlog, uh, which has some parameters and also tries to simulate uh, some heat pressure. And we see that poses are greatly reduced with a new garbage collector on a machine that has multiple CPUs and is part of garbage collector actually offers uh, multiple GC threads. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, that number of GC threads uh, is calculated using some heuristics. Um, and there's a room for tuning still, which is imported intrinsics, uh, imported uh, heuristics suitable for hotspot virtual machine because it's it's also a Java virtual machine, um, but didn't uh, really test it other options. Let me change the picture and make it even better. Starting many garbage collector threads um, introduce a peculiar trade-off and the substrate VM and native images, the substrate VM are well known for very fast uh, startup time. And if we start many garbage collection threads, uh, when fast, then the startup time suffers. So the difference um, may be significant, um, like starting dozens of them and cost uh, Five ten percent of startup time, which sometimes is critical. So when we talk about the, the other component, a synchronization uh, for ages, there is a well known uh, technique uh, called bias locking, and as I said, there's definitely a problem with uh, concurrent uh, access and synchronized access to different things. It, it even leaked through a standard uh, class library where new uh, classes were introduced to help developers to avoid that. Um, the bias locking in OpenJDK also existed for a long time. It existed in JDK 6, but by, at some point it was removed because Java now has, uh, Java now has uh, virtual threads and they are part of the API and um, it's hard to support both virtual threads and bias locking within uh, the frame of current implementation in hotspot virtual VM in open in big open JDK. And um, yeah, sorry, it's not hyperlock here. Uh, it's just a performance of uh, this case with uh, streams and buffered streams. So here you can see programmers often use um, standard class library uh, functions and classes. And surprisingly, when such changes happen uh, in the runtime on the line that executes that code, it may greatly slow down uh, the execution. So the code wasn't changed but after removing bias locking in the case when the access is sequential, you see it's like edX uh, slow down in such code. And this is a typical code where we copy some data from uh, one place to another. So that's an opportunity because uh, in Substrate VM currently uh, this niche of uh, multi uh, uh, of a special thing locking for the case, then the native image itself is assembled for uh, a multi-threaded environment. Uh, this is still empty. So this implementation may speed up such cases. And we know that uh, the speed up may be very significant. So there's another pull request uh, in RAVM project that allows uh, some uh, build time to specify a build time flag to use uh, the special locking. And in runtime, uh, we try to keep locks thin. So this is a classical approach. Uh, we initially started uh, with the variant uh, when 
we replaced uh, one word uh, inside uh, object header. So uh, in Java heap uh, and in substrate, substrate EM, uh, it is always well. Uh, objects uh, have uh, their headers, so where special information, including uh, the locking their monitor information because every object can uh, be a lock actually uh, this information is written there uh, so initially we tried to replace uh, so this classical approach that existed in hotspot and to replace uh, this word uh, not to be not a pointer to uh, the monitor object but to be a special record that uh, contains information about the owning thread and uh, if it's uh, the, the amount of uh, recursive logs and information that it is actually a thing. Uh, but well, it turned to be uh, not very compatible with current implementation uh, with many places uh, where we can uh, expect. So same, uh, same reference uh, is hardly to be recognized either as an uh, as a reference or as a long word just representing uh, this structure. So of course, uh, thin locking uh, the amount of recursive logs is limited because we only have a certain number of bits, and the implementation itself is based on the existing. Uh, monitor support logic within Graal VM. Interesting results as expected. Uh, we see a great speed up on the very simple patterns where we uh, copy some streams, copy some data from streams, one stream to other streams, uh, if the access is sequential, which is a very popular pattern in many programs. And also, uh, we don't see a degradation uh, when there's uh, actually a concurrent access to such objects. If there's uh, a contention, uh, the performance stays the same. So thin logs work as well as uh, parallel garbage collection. Well, if you again look at startup time, thin logs help to decrease startup time because uh, this is really a, a frequent pattern during application startup. While at the same time, if you have many parallel threads, uh, they can slow down the startup. Um, yeah, thank you. I still think that all tricks work very well, and I'm ready to answer some questions. Thank you very much.